GILAT CPE Installation and Pointing Instructions Congratulations on purchasing GILAT's Broadband Internet Satellite Kit. This video will lead you through the installation steps. Please refer to the user guide, which can be found in the CD for safety instructions and additional information before you start the installation. It is recommended to follow the quick guide while watching the video. Content of the kit and the list of tools required for the installation are specified in the manual. Verify that you have the pointing data and installation parameters, location code, and RF cluster code from the invoice. Selecting a suitable outdoor location with a clear view towards the satellite is very important. Obstructions like buildings or trees may affect the signal strength. The dish pole must be installed vertically. Use a spirit level to verify. Please refer to the manual for information about mechanical forces on the pole. To assemble the back bracket on the AZL, place the AZL bolts down on an even surface. Position the back bracket with its rear surface to the AZL. Apply the skew plate to the back bracket with the arrow marking facing forward. Insert the four bolts through the holes in the skew plate and the AZL. From the rear side, place a flat washer a spring washer, and thread a nut on each bolt. Screw on the nuts without tightening them, leaving enough freedom to allow rotation of the back bracket. To mount the AZL onto the pole, loosen the clamp nuts and release the clamps from the bolts on the open side. Place the AZL on the pole. Reposition the clamps on the bolts. Tighten the nuts and make sure there's an even and parallel contact with the pole surface. The nuts must be tight enough to hold the assembly from sliding down, but still allow rotation around the pole. Verify the two nuts retaining the elevation and the two nuts retaining the azimuth are loose. Elevation can be set by rotating the elevation screw. Set the elevation as indicated in the built-in scale to the nominal elevation value as indicated in the invoice. Insert a bolt into the uppermost hole of the reflector from the concave side. Thread a nut halfway onto the bolt. Bring the reflector in contact with the back bracket and move it down so that the bolt enters the U-slot of the back bracket. Tighten the nut by hand. Insert the remaining four bolts to connect the reflector with the back bracket with flat washers, spring washers, and nuts. Remove the nut from the bolt in the U-slot. Place a flat washer, a spring washer, then replace the nut. Tighten all five nuts. To attach the boom arm to the back bracket, insert the correct end of the boom arm into the back bracket all the way until it locks into position. Insert the four bolts with a flat washer and a spring washer, two at each side by hand. To assemble the transceiver bracket and the transceiver, insert and tighten the four bolts. Fit the transceiver bracket on the front end of the boom arm. Insert and tighten the four bolts with flat washers and spring washers. Tighten the four bolts. To thread the RF cables through the boom, feed the outdoor ends of the cables through the boom in the direction of the transceiver. Leave about one meter of extra cable length between the boom arm and the transceiver. Connect the grounding wire to the transceiver and back bracket. To set the skew value, rotate the back bracket reflector assembly around the AZL skew plate assembly to set the skew value as indicated in the invoice. Tighten the four nuts holding the AZL skew plate assembly together. To set the nominal azimuth, ensure that the fine tuning grid is set to zero. Mount the elevation offset arrow. Using a compass, point the dish according to the azimuth value provided in the invoice. Check elevation offset arrow. If arrow is not pointing to the center of the grid, modify the nominal elevation to compensate for the offset. The cable should be thread into the house. The hole should be drilled pointing down to prevent rain penetration into the wall. Cut excess cable, expose the braid, fold back the braid, Expose the center wire. Screw on the connectors. Connect the RF cables to the modem. Connect to the computer using the LAN cable. Connect the power supply and power up. 
configure the computer LAN port as instructed in the user guide. To start the modem configuration, start your internet browser. Type sky.manage in the address field and press enter. Enter the location and the RF cluster codes and click next. In the dish pointing page, click start pointing. To lock onto the satellite, rotate the dish as slowly as possible around the nominal azimuth until the beeping tone changes, indicating that the modem is locked on the satellite. Lock is indicated by a two-second transitional tone. Once the transceiver emits the lock tone, stop rotating the dish and tighten the nuts of the clamp. To start azimuth fine pointing, change the azimuth settings on the dish in a random direction until you can hear the audio indication reduced tone and staggering rate. Stop and reverse the direction. At some point, you should hear the pitch increase until you get a continuous tone. Continue in the same direction until staggering tone starts again. Stop and reverse direction once again. As soon as you hear the continuous tone, stop. To start elevation fine pointing, change the elevation settings until the audio tone indication drops in tone and stagger rate. Stop in reverse direction until continuous tone is achieved. Continue in the same direction until staggering tone starts again. Reverse direction again. And stop as soon as continuous tone is achieved. Repeat the same procedure for azimuth. Once you stop at the continuous tone, the dish has been optimally pointed. Tighten the nuts, retaining the azimuth and elevation. Apply light pressure on the side and top of the assembly until the tone changes to a staggering tone. Verify that once you let go, the tone returns to peak tone. To finish the modem installation, click Finish Pointing. The screen will change. Click Next. The screen will change again. The modem will run through a five-step installation procedure, which can take up to five minutes. The last screen should be installation finished successfully. Click Finish. Installation is completed. You are now connected to the internet. Enjoy the endless opportunities that are out there on the World Wide Web.